In this video, I wanted to make a brief introduction to custom attributes using the property attribute and the decorator draw classes. Now, if you've been using Unity for any amount of time, you will have probably been using attributes already. Attributes like serialized field and hopefully also tooltip have crept into your practices. Maybe you have also dabbled in attributes like header or space. Well, in this video, I will add a couple of new custom attributes for our inspectors to improve their layouts and their readability. So without further ado, let's get to it. So before we jump into creating our own custom attributes, let's have a look at the ones I've already mentioned. So what we're going to do is we've got a default scene here and we have some characters. And if you like these characters, I will leave in the link in the description where you can find them in the asset store. Now let's select Bob. We'll go to our hierarchy and we'll have Bob here and we'll see Bob in our scene. Let's add a character script to Bob and put some attributes on that. So in our project, we'll go to scripts, we'll create a C sharp script and we're going to call the script character and we'll go into our hierarchy and we'll select Bob and we'll add the character to Bob. So there's the script. So now let's go into Visual Studio and start making some changes. So the first one I'm going to create is I'm going to give Bob a name. So we'll use the attribute serialized field. And because I like to do it, I'll add a tooltip name of the character. And we'll just use string name or string dot empty because we haven't got anything there. There we go. So I'll save that. And if we come back into Unity, you'll see if we look at Bob, Bob now has a name attribute, a name field from that attribute. Let's go back into Visual Studio. Now let's add a description. Same thing again. We'll pop in the tooltip. Description for the character. And we'll do a string and description. And again, we don't need anything in there to start off with. Now, with the description, we could also add another build here and we could add that uh, another attribute and that attribute could be text area. There we go. So if I save this and go back into Unity, what we'll see is we'll see a text area. So a nice big area to fill in for our description. Now let's say we were going to add some audio to our characters. Let's jump back in and we can add some audio in here. So we'll put in a tooltip. Def audio clip. And we'll call this audio clip and def audio clip. And let's add another one. Let's say we've seen Jeff die, so death's good, but we're going to want to know how they died. Maybe they get angry when you shoot them. So we'll put in a, an angry audio clip as well. So let's save that and go back into Unity. And as we can see, we've got some audio clips down here. But, you know, if I was a designer and I was looking at this, this is all quite bunched up and there's no categories around this. So let's put some categories in using the header and let's put some spacing in. So we'll come into here, we'll add a header at the top and we'll call this features and we'll do the same down here, header, but this time we'll call it audio. And it felt a little bit bunched up between name and description. So let's put some more space in there. There we go. So now if I come back into Unity, we can see that I've got features and audio as headers and I've separated the name and description out. So we've got a little bit of a nicer layout to our script here. So let's say when we were looking at this layout on our inspector, we decided, you know what, actually, 
I don't think that's enough to have this separation in these headers like they are. We actually want to separate each of these characters with a horizontal line that separates the two parts. Well, there's no horizontal line default attribute in Unity. Uh, you can put a horizontal line in by creating it in the inspector, but then you would need to serialize all these properties separately, put in the horizontal line, serialize all the properties underneath. So what we'll do is we'll create a horizontal line here. And that comes in two parts, an attribute and a property drawer to draw that attribute. So the first thing to do is to come into project and under scripts, we'll create a new C sharp script and we're going to call this horizontal line attributes. We'll go into Visual Studio and this will actually be deriving from property attributes. And we can get rid of all this because we don't need any of that. Now, what we're going to have is we'll have to know, we, we want to set the thickness of that line. And also, let's pad that line out a little bit because we're going to want some padding around it. Because if I just done a single pixel line there, it would barely be noticeable between the two parts. And then we'll set up a default constructor for our line. There we go. Cool. So now if I save this and I come back into character, what I can do is between these two parts, I can actually type in horizontal line. And then I can choose what parts I want to set. So let's say I was happy with the one. Actually, now I'm going to make that two because I want it to be a bit thicker. And let's say the padding, I'm going to have 10 uh, because I want to see how much it's padded out. So let's save this. Now, if we go back into Unity at the moment, we won't actually see anything on Bob. Nothing will be actually displaying because we haven't actually created a drawer for that yet. So let's go into the editor and we'll create a new C sharp script. And we're going to call this horizontal line drawer. And we'll open that up. There we go. And this one is actually going to derive from decorator drawer, which we'll get from the Unity editor library. Now, again, we don't need any of this. This is all model behavior stuff. And we're going to set up two functions here. One is the get height function that we get, that we override on the decorator drawer. This will tell Unity what the height is of this drawer that we're putting in there. And then the next thing we're going to do is an on GUI function, and that will basically tell it what to draw. So let's get started. We'll override the get height functionality and we'll be overriding the on GUI functionality. Now, one of the things we can get from decorator drawer is attribute, the attribute that we've just set up and then put into the character. So we'll do a horizontal line attribute and this will come from attribute as horizontal line attribute. Okay, and what we know is we've got a padding and a thickness in here. Now we want to set the height to either the padding or the thickness, depending on what's larger. So we'll just use mathf.max and we'll take the padding, which will usually be the thicker of the two, and we'll take the thickness. There we go. Okay, the next thing is we'll want to set up the actual drawing. So we'll come into here. We won't be doing the base. Now we'll want to set, we get the position. This is the position that's relative in the inspector that gets passed to us to say, draw at this position. Now this position doesn't really have a height or anything and we want to set that. So we'll do position dot height. And this will be 
the thickness. So this is this is the rectangle that sits in the inspector, and we want it to be the thickness of of our line, the line that we're actually going to be putting in. So we then are going to set the position of the line. And this is going to be, this is where we use our padding. So this basically will halve our padding because our padding is the entire thing around the line. And then we've got the line in between it. So we'll halve that so it's halfway down. So we start at zero and then we move down halfway and that's where we're going to put our actual line. So let's draw that line. Editor GUI dot draw rectangle. And this we're going to draw at the position. That's the rectangle we got from our on GUI with the changes. And then we're going to actually set the color of our rectangle. Now here's a pro tip for you. If you just set a white color and you're using the Unity Pro, which is a black background, then if somebody switches to a non-pro version or the non-dark version, it used to be pro, now you can have it with pro license or not, and they're using a white background in Unity, then that's a white line on a white background is not going to look good at all. So you'll want to select your color depending on the skin that's been chosen for Unity. So editor GUI utility dot is pro skin. That tells me if I've got a black background or a white background for my unity. Now, if it is, then basically we want to have a lighter color. Here you go. And we'll set that to one. And if it isn't, color, the lighter color, seven sounds good, doesn't it? There we go. Okay. So if you're using the pro skin, it's black. If you're using the non pro skin, it's white. So those are the colors we're going to actually choose. Okay. So those are the attribute, those are the functions set up, but we also have to tell Unity that this decorator drawer is for a particular attribute. And how we do that is we actually use an attribute itself. And we use the custom property drawer attribute and we tell it the type. So we're using the type of horizontal line attribute. There we go. Now, if we go back into Unity, and we select on Bob, there we are. You see our line coming in underneath. And we can change how that looks by going into our character script and changing the thickness. Maybe we want to have a much bigger padding and we want it to be slightly thicker. We'll save that, we'll come back into Unity. We'll look at Bob. And there we go, it's a thicker line and it's got more padding. Now this looks like a section. And we could do the same for features. So again, we'll come back in and we'll stick it here. Go back into Unity. And there we go. Now we have sections being created and we have a really nice layout that we can see. Okay, so let's do one more. Let's put in some help boxes actually around near our variables that we have. Let's say, for instance, I wanted to put in something more than the tooltip here uh, when somebody hovers over the description for the character. Let's say I actually wanted to have a much more detailed section under here. Now I could create a, a ginormous tooltip, but that doesn't really make sense because every time I wanted to see it, I would have to hover over. I want something to be a little bit more defined. So what we'll do is we'll create an attribute called the note attribute and we'll stick it under here in a box. Now in project, we'll come into scripts, we'll create a new C sharp script and we'll call this note attribute. We'll open it up in Visual Studio 
again will come from property attribute. We'll remove this off and this time string text equals string dot empty. And do you know what? We're definitely going to want them to fill in that string each time. So let's put one in the constructor. So now they have to enter a text whenever they use this note attribute. Now, just above our description, under character, we'll put in here the note. And as you can see, we have to put in the text because it's telling us we have to. So let's put in the description should, should be full of relevant details, including height and weight. There we go. Now, obviously, we need to have a drawer for this. So we'll come back into Unity. Come back up to Editor, create a C sharp script. We call this Note Drawer. Let's open this up. Now, like before, Decorator Drawer, pulling from the editor. This is going to be a custom property drawer of type of note attribute what happened there there we go doesn't have any of this and we're going to override the get height and we're going to override the on GUI now we wanted to put this note in a box to make it stand out and what we can actually use here is the editor GUI actually has something called a help box. And we're going to put that into a position. Now we'll need to get our attribute. So we'll use note attribute, note attribute equals attribute as note attribute. There we go. So we'll take this note attribute and we'll use the text of it. Now you'll notice that it's not finished yet. And that's because we need to put some form of icon at the end of it. Well, we either need to select no icon, info, warning, or error. And these are icons that come up on the left side of the help box. But for now, we'll stick with none because we just want this note underneath it. Now, for the height, we have something a little bit different this time because we're going to want to calculate how big the text is. We can't just put in a note of a certain size because that would look odd if the text goes way over the box or it's a very small amount of text in a very large box. So to do that, what we're going to need to do is firstly, again, we're going to need to get our note attribute. We're going to create a style, a GUI style, and then we're going to use style.calculate height to work out that height. So if you've ever used GUI style before, it's just a way of setting a style for how a text will appear. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to grab the editor styles. We're just going to grab the help box because that's what we're playing with below. Now, what we'll probably like to do is we'll like to text anchor. And we're going to text anchor to the middle left. So we'll keep the text middle left. So it looks correct in the, in the inspector. We're going to want to set word wrap to true. So it doesn't just fling off the end of our help box because that won't help anyone. And now we're actually going to use padding. Now padding will basically set padding around the text in the box itself. And we'll use a new rectangle offset and the padding here, I'll just use 10. 10 all around, there we go. And I don't like the default font size. 
because it's actually 10. And I find that a little bit small for the help boxes. Maybe I just need better glasses, but we're gonna basically set that to 12. Now we're gonna set a height in a variable. So we'll set up a variable up here, M height, because we're gonna want to use that variable in this on GUI down here. So let's set this up. Oh, and M height will equal. Now this is where we work out how big the text actually sits in the box. So we'll use style.calculate height. We'll do a new GUI content. This GUI content will take this note attribute.text. And then we're going to want to actually take in the width. Now it might seem odd to use screen width here, but that actually works in the inspector. So it uses the inspector screen to work out the width there. Okay, so next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to send back M height. But here's the thing. We're going to want a little bit of padding around the actual box itself so that it's not straight up against anything above it. So what we'll do is we'll create a const float k okay, padding and I'm just going to set this to 20 for now. And in the height, we'll return padding. There we go. So now we're going to want to offset and size this help box. So position dot height equals the M height and position dot Y plus equals K adding by, by half. There we go. So what we're doing is we're setting the height of the actual box the, the area, sorry. And then we're putting the padding in. So we're offsetting the box on the Y. So we take the position of the Y, that's the first part of the first point on the inspector that this particular GUI will show up. And then we're adding to that half the padding. So half the padding starts up above. There we go. Okay, and then this position will be set here. So this is setting the height of the box in there. Excellent. So let's save this and go back into Unity. We go into the hierarchy, select Bob, and there we have it. We have a little field for the description, a little note box, help box. The description should be full of relevant details, including height and weight. So I'm coming down in my inspector. I know I'm gonna insert a name here, I'm gonna call it Bob. And then I'm going to read this and go, the description should be full of relevant details, including height and weight. Great. Okay. Well, the height of Bob is six foot and his weight is 200 pounds. There we go. And then I would move on to the next. So it could be really helpful to have these little note boxes in our inspectors. Now, one thing to note is that when we looked at the actual help box, because this is a note, we've set the message type to none, uh, but we could actually set this to warning, info, or error. But here's the thing. If I was to take this message type and go back to my note attribute and use it here, say public message type, you'll notice that it's not under the Unity Engine library. It's actually under the Unity Editor library. Now, if I use the Unity Editor library, you might not notice an error straight away. What will happen is you'll get all the way down and then you'll do a build and your build will error because the build will turn around and go, why are you including a Unity Editor library in a build for, for runtime? So that will actually be a mistake. Now, there is a way to get around this. And the way to do it is to basically create the message type here, and we'll create it as an enumeration. So we're basically copying the message type that we had and putting that as an enumeration here. So we're opening this up. 
we'll make this an enum. Close this off. And then we basically want to copy the exact same layout that's in this message type. So if I go to the definition of this, oh, that's wrong. I'll set this to the Unity editor message type. There we go. And if I go to the definition of this, we can see none info warning error. So we'll make sure those are exactly the same. And we could actually just copy that and put that in our own enumeration here. That, that works for us. So now if I save this and I come into my note attribute, what I can do is I can actually use message type here now, which is taking from my enumeration. And then I can set it to none here. Now, the only problem with that is when we come into here, how do we set this up? Well, because this is looking for a message type, we can use note attribute dot message type, which will error because it's like this isn't the same. But we can always cast this to it to a um, Unity editor message type. So what this is doing is it's taking the integer of message type and it's casting them between. Now, I don't recommend this under every circumstance because if Unity was to add extra types to their message type, then things could start unaligning. Now, they're not likely to change the actual values of the message type because if they did so, they'd start having problems where people had already used this and were starting to see changes. The only thing is they could add to it and then you've got problems, you have to come back and add to it. So I wouldn't do this in every circumstance, but it's certainly a great hack here. So if I save this now and I come under character, I could actually come into here, select message type, and then select message type of type warning. Now, if I save and go back into Unity, and then go to Bob, there we are. There's the warning icon next to our actual script. And we could still build this and we wouldn't get any errors because we're using our own enumeration of message type. And we're then casting that in the drawer to Unity Editor's message type. And that's it for this tutorial video. I just wanted to give you a brief introduction to the ability to use the property attribute and the decorator drawer classes. Now, you could use this system for many things. So let me know other examples of using this technique in the comments. And if you like this video, well, you know what to do. In the future, I actually plan on doing another video expanding into property drawers being used in validation. So if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, then you might be missing out. So consider hitting the subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching.